Welcome to our series on traditional approaches to cost assignment. In this series, we will be focusing on traditional approaches to allocating overhead costs to products. Specifically, we'll be looking at the plant-wide and departmental approaches. So what are our learning objectives for this video? First, we want to be able to distinguish between cost assignment for direct and indirect costs. For our indirect costs, we want to be able to explain the plant-wide, departmental and activity-based costing overhead allocations. As I have already mentioned, for this series, we'll be focusing on the plant-wide and departmental approaches. We will have a separate video series dedicated to activity-based costing. We will also need to discuss whether it is preferable to use budgeted or actual overhead rates and why. Finally, we will then need to be able to explain the consequences if we prefer to use budgeted overhead rates. Let us begin by looking at our costs to be allocated. We have direct costs and indirect costs. You should remember from our introduction to cost terms and concepts video that direct costs comprise items like direct materials and direct labor and they can be taken directly to the cost object. This direct tracing can take place via documents such as material requisitions for our direct materials and timesheets or clock cards for our direct labor. Unlike direct costs, indirect costs cannot be directly traced to the product. Remember, these are costs such as supervision, repairs and maintenance, which are necessary for production but cannot be observed or measured in relation to the cost object. As a result, we will need to use a cost allocation method to estimate the costs allocated to the cost object. Now these cost allocation methods can range from simplistic methods to sophisticated methods. Our simplistic methods are likely to be inexpensive, rely more on arbitrary allocations, have low accuracy and higher cost of errors. On the other hand, our sophisticated measures are likely to be expensive, rely more on cause and effect allocations, have higher accuracy and a lower cost of errors. When deciding on which type of system to use, you need to consider the cost versus benefit of each system. Now looking at the more common methods of cost allocation, something like our plant wide rates would be considered a more simplistic system, whereas activity based costing would be considered a more sophisticated system a departmental system would be somewhere in the middle. So let us consider the workings of the plant-wide overhead allocation method. Our first step is to determine our total manufacturing overhead cost for the entire factory or operation. We then need to identify a single volume-based cost driver, which we believe best explains the cost or best represents the product's usage of the overhead costs. Now, when we talk about a volume-based cost driver, we are looking for a cost driver that correlates directly with the number of units produced. The three main volume-based cost drivers are direct labor hours, machine hours, and units produced. We can then calculate the overhead rate by dividing the overhead cost by the cost driver. We then use this overhead rate to allocate the overhead cost to the cost object. Now let us consider how the departmental overhead rate determination differs to that of the plant-wide rate. Our first step remains the same. We want to determine the total manufacturing overhead cost. After this, we want to identify the separate departments within the factory. There are two different types of departments we want to identify, namely our production and support departments. Our production departments are those responsible for the actual manufacture of the product. Our service departments, on the other hand, are those departments which provide support services to the production departments. Support services are not involved in the actual production process, but are necessary to keep the factory running. You can think of support services such as repairs and maintenance here. Once we have identified the separate departments, we then need to allocate the total overhead to each individual department. We then need to reallocate the costs of the service departments to the production departments. In the example on screen, department three is a service department. There are four main ways of doing this, namely the direct method, the specified order of closing method, the reciprocal or repeated distribution method, and the simultaneous equation method. We will have a detailed look at each of these methods 
in later videos in this series. Our next step then is to identify a volume-based cost driver for each department. Like with the plant-wide approach, we again use cost drivers such as direct labour hours, machine hours or units produced. However, a key advantage of the departmental approach is that each department can have a different cost driver. Therefore, if department 1 is machine or capital intensive, we can use a machine hour rate for this department. However, if department 2 is labour intensive, we don't have to use machine hours just because we used it in department 1. Rather, we can use labour hours which is more reflective of what happens in department 2. We then calculate the separate overhead rates for each department individually and finally apply these rates to the cost object. So, to summarise what we have seen, for plant-wide overhead rates, we calculate one overhead recovery rate for the factory as a whole. For departmental, we split the factory into different departments and calculate separate rates for each department. Take a moment to pause the video and think about which of these two methods is likely to result in more accurate costs for our product. Now let us look briefly at activity-based costing. We will have a more detailed look at this method in a separate video series. As with plant-wide and departmental, our first step remains the same. We want to determine the total manufacturing overhead. After this, we want to identify the separate activities within the factory that result in the product being produced. Activities are a set of tasks or processes that use resources to enable production of the product. These could be things like ordering materials for production or setting up machines. Now a key difference between activity-based costing and the departmental approach is the number of activities identified. The number of departments in a factory is generally quite small. The number of activities, however, is much larger. This use of a much larger number of activities is the first aspect which allows activity-based costing to be a more accurate allocation method. The overhead costs are then allocated to the activities based on how much it costs to perform that activity. So perhaps an engineer sets up the machines amidst other tasks. We can estimate the percentage time that the engineer spends setting up machines and allocate that proportion of their salary to the setup activity. The second difference between ABC and departmental is that we don't reallocate any service activities to production activities. In activity-based costing, we do not distinguish between activities in this manner. The second difference between activity-based costing and departmental is that we don't reallocate any service activities to production activities. In activity-based costing, we do not distinguish between activities in this manner. We then need to identify separate cost drivers for each activity. This is the third difference to traditional methods, as we can use a greater variety of cost drivers and we are not limited to volume-based drivers. Rather, because we are trying to go for a cause and effect relationship between the cost and the cost driver, we can use both volume-based and non-volume-based cost drivers. A non-volume-based cost driver uses alternative measures instead of assuming that consumption is based on the number of units produced. For instance, if we have an activity of ordering raw materials, we could use a cost driver such as number of orders prepared rather than direct labor hours, machine hours, or units produced. The key here is for a cause and effect relationship between the cost and the cost driver. We then calculate a separate overhead rate for each activity and apply that overhead rate to the cost object based on its usage of the activity. To summarize the key differences between the departmental overhead rates and activity-based costing, we have the following. First, we allocate overheads to activities for which we have a larger number and not departments. Secondly, we do not distinguish between service activities and production activities. And thirdly, we look for a cause and effect relationship. And as a result of this, we have a wider range of cost drivers 
including both volume and non-volume based drivers. Now, when we are busy calculating our overhead rates, should we use the actual overhead cost with actual activity levels, or should we use the budgeted overhead rates with budgeted activity levels? Take a moment to think about this and decide. What we notice here is that if we use actual overheads, we run into two major problems. The first problem is that our information is not timely. We have to wait for the end of the period in order to determine our total cost and activity level. This is not feasible, especially if we need to provide customers with quotes. Think about it. If we are calculating our overheads on an annual basis and the new year has just begun, with a client looking for a quote now, we will have to wait for the end of the year in order to determine the actual cost and activity for overhead purposes. This is clearly not feasible. To accommodate this, maybe we can shorten the period and calculate our overheads on a monthly or even weekly basis. Again, this is problematic as both activity levels and overhead costs can very easily fluctuate over such short timeframes, resulting in different costs from one week to the next, causing instability in our prices and profits. Therefore, what we need to use is a predetermined overhead absorption rate based on our estimated annual overhead expenditure and our estimated annual activity. Normally, we prefer to use what is termed the normal activity level as our activity level. This normal activity level represents the long-run average capacity, taking into account things such as seasonal fluctuations. What then are the consequences of using a predetermined overhead rate rather than the actual overhead rate? You should remember that the predetermined overhead rate is made up of two components, namely the budgeted expenditure and the normal activity level. Remember, we calculate our overhead rate by taking the cost divided by the activity level. It is possible that both the budgeted expenditure and the normal activity level may differ from the actual overhead cost and the actual activity level. The result is that we get variances. The difference between the budgeted cost and the actual cost represents our fixed overhead expenditure variance. The difference between our normal activity level and our actual activity level represents our fixed overhead volume variance. Together, these two variances make up our under or over recovery of fixed overheads. We will have a more detailed look at our under or over recovery in our series on absorption and variable costing. While we will have a more detailed look at our expenditure and volume variances under our series on standard costing. That brings us to the end of our overview video. In our next video in the series, we will be looking at a plant-wide overhead rate example. See you next time.